there are many reasons why a wheel might go out of true. But as long as it's not too bad, far from being that dark art that many people think it is, straightening a wheel is actually something you can have a go at yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you how. Fundamentally then, wheel truing is not rocket science. Now, providing we're only talking minor buckles, and by that I mean perhaps no more than 15 to 20 millimeters out in any one direction, you should be able to tackle um, straining that wheel yourself. If it is out by more than that 15 to 20 mil in any one direction, I would suggest now is the time to take that to a local bike shop or seek the help of a qualified wheel builder. Because while you might be able to pull that back into straight yourself, a round wheel isn't necessarily a strong wheel if you've done or got about that in the wrong way. So that's when the experience of someone who uh, knows what they're doing with wheel building will come into play and they'll be able to make those tweaks in a way which will retain the overall strength of the wheel. So it's also worth noting that wheels go out of true in two different dimensions. You've got the lateral movement, that is side to side. You've also got radial trueness, that is the kind of circularness of the wheel. So how much the rim moves in and out or up and down. So we've got to true that in, in two different dimensions. For that, the best tool for the job is obviously to have a proper truing jig like this one. Now, this is a particularly expensive setup. Um, you don't have to go to these lengths. There are several much cheaper options on the market. Or indeed, if you really don't want to invest in a, a truing jig, then there is a, a sort of a hack you can do using your bike as the truing jig, um, using either a pencil or an Allen key and some zip ties or some tape. I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. So let's look at the tools we're going to need for the job. Pretty straightforward on this one, uh, a spoke key being the main tool that we're going to need. Uh, it's really important, vitally important I would say, that you get a spoke key that is a really good fit on the spoke nipple. Uh, particularly these days, uh, a lot of wheels, in order to make them lightweight, manufacturers use alloy spoke nipples, which means they can really be prone to rounding off if you use a poor quality or a badly fitting spoke key. So yeah, make sure you've got a spoke key that's a really good fit, that's the first thing to do. To do that, you're going to pop the spoke key onto the spoke nipple like so, and you should find there's very little play in there if it's a really good fit. So that's a good fit on this particular one, for example. Spoke keys come in all different shapes and sizes, uh, all do the same job though, which is to rotate the, the spoke nipple. Just personal preference really. The only thing to consider is on some wheels, you'll find there is no visible spoke nipple at all. And that's because, like in this wheel just here, the nipples are actually hidden up inside the rim. And that's done for a number of reasons, um, aerodynamics mostly. Um, so for this particular type of wheel, you would need a different type of spoke key. So rather than having one which mounts on the external side, like I've just showed you, you would have a tool such as this one, where the spoke key is, goes in through the top side of the rim and down onto the top of the spoke nipple, like so. So then you would make your adjustments in this way, rather than from the outside. Same uh, principles apply to truing the wheel, just a different tool to get the job done. One other tool that you might need if you're using aero bladed spokes is something to hold that spoke in position. Now the reason for that is as you turn the spoke nipple um, to tighten it or loosen it, what you'll find is that that aero spoke will probably twist uh, in either direction as you turn the nipple. And you obviously don't want that. Those aero spokes are designed to be in a particular plane. So this tool is designed to hold that aero bladed spoke in position. So I've got aero spokes on this particular wheel here, so I can demonstrate that. You would literally just locate that onto the spoke and then you can pop your finger through the hole in the middle and that just gives you a way of just holding that in the, the correct orientation as you true the wheel. On to the actual truing process. First things first, I've got the wheel mounted in the truing stand and I'm just going to give that a, a, an initial spin just to take a look at the severity of the buckle that we're dealing with. Now in this case we've got probably, I don't know, 7 to 10 mil of movement laterally. Um, what we can do with the truing stand as I mentioned is wheels go out of true in two different dimensions. So we can also just bring the jaws in and then up in this direction and then that gives me a gauge to see if the wheel is also straight radially. But at the moment I can see it isn't. 
but there's, there's definitely a lateral dip that I'm gonna to have to deal with as I go through the truing process. Now, personally, I like to deal with the radial side of the, uh, the trueness first, because I think that has more of an impact on the lateral movement as well than doing it the other, other way around. So, um, but before we get into the actual truing side, the other thing I like to check is for loose spokes. So this is a really good habit to get into because that's actually one of the most common reasons why we all have gone out of true in the first place, which is a spoke nipple has over time vibrated loose um, just through general riding quite often, uh, or from an impact which unloads that spoke and just in that fraction of a second while it's loose, the nipple unwinds slightly and then that spoke will always be loose from that point on. So yeah, just checking for loose spokes is a really good start point. So what I'll do then is I'll find my valve hole. It's always a good place to start with any, it's good practice with any wheel adjustments. If you start with a valve hole, you know where you're at. And then I'm gonna just grab the spokes in pairs and work my way around, just feeling each set the tension. That's pretty good. The tension in this wheel is actually no problem at all. Um, if you were to find a loose spoke, it'd be very obvious. One would be really floppy. Um, and what you do in that instance is you'd start working on that spoke and just bring that spoke up to the tension of those around it, um, just so that you're sort of dealing with even tension when you get to the, the truing process. Right, so without further ado then, let's tackle the truing process. So what you've got to basically think about when you're truing a wheel is, is how it's structured in, in the first place. So that will give you a clue as to what is going to happen when you do certain, make certain turns on the, the spoke nipple. So you can see that a wheel is built obviously in, with the spokes going in two directions. Uh, this spoke, for instance, goes across to this side of the hub. The spoke next to it, this one here, goes across to this side of the hub. Now, what would happen if you tighten or increase the tension on this spoke, because it's going to this side of the hub, this spoke would shorten as you increase the tension on it, and therefore it would pull the rim in this direction. So the way that that's easy to sort of understand is if you tighten a spoke which goes to the right-hand side of the hub flange, it's gonna pull that rim right. Conversely, if I were to choose this spoke, which goes to the left-hand hub flange, if I were to tighten this spoke, that would then pull the rim left. So it's a balancing act, basically, and that's what I was saying. Wheel truing isn't rocket science. It's just a case of working out which way you need the rim to move and then making those small adjustments to the spokes as necessary um, in the correct direction to pull that rim where you want it to go. The skill is to know how much to adjust, I guess. You'll get used to that as you, you start to make more adjustments to wheels. But essentially, the, the rule is very little and often is best. Um, you know, you don't want to be turning a spoke nipple through a whole turn or even half a turn sometimes. Just quarter of a turn is enough to begin with, just little bits and then recheck. There's no harm in just turning it a quarter of a turn, rechecking and so on. Do that lots of times. That's a far better way to go about it. And also take your time. Don't rush this. You know, wheel building can be quite a nice cathartic thing in a weird way. Um, it can be quite relaxing, so make yourself a cup of tea, sit at the wheel jig and, and be prepared to just spend a little bit of time doing it. Right, so I've got my spoke key that I know is a really good fit on that particular size of spoke nipple. And because I'm dealing with bladed spokes, I've got my little bladed spoke holding tool as well. So the first step is to isolate where we want to be working on the wheel. So where is it out of true? Um, using the gauge then, I've just set that up to be pretty close to the underside of that rim. And now I'm just gonna let the wheel turn and straight away I can see where that has a big high spot. So I'm kind of then using the spokes as my map. Um, so I can see that from this spoke is where it starts to touch all the way around to that spoke there. So yeah, we've kind of actually got, you see those three spokes there where we've got significant contact. So what that's telling me is that the wheel is high in that spot basically. So I want to pull the wheel in slightly in that way. Now, when you're dealing with radial buckles, you always want to work in pairs of spokes because you're trying to maintain as much as possible the lateral shape of the wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these two pairs here, which are in my area that I want to adjust. So I'm gonna tighten these four spokes here ever so slightly. As I said, little and often is the key here. So you're not making massive adjustments. I'm literally gonna put half a turn uh, on these spokes. As I said, bladed spokes, so I'm gonna use this little gadget to hold my spoke so that it doesn't lose its orientation. And also, thing to note at this point, 
which direction do you turn the spoke key to tighten a spoke? Well, it depends a little bit way, which way you're looking at the wheel. As I look at it this way, if you imagine that that spoke nipple is screwed on clockwise onto that spoke, to tighten it, you would turn clockwise looking at it this way. So basically I'm going to turn my spoke key clockwise by half a turn, and then I'm gonna work systematically through the spokes that I identified a second ago. Okay, so that's half a turn on each of those four spokes that I've identified. So now we should already see that bit of the wheel no longer touches where it did before. So what I can do now is just bring the adjustment level even closer and just go back and recheck. So you can't see it probably as I can on, on here, be difficult to see on the camera, but that already is very, very close in terms of the adjustment. So although I can still hear it's out, it's just that little bit there maybe that I'd want to take out. That's the biggest high spot. So again, easy to sort of see where that is, it's here. So I've got this pair of spokes here that I could deal with. Again, I might just put a quarter of a turn on those two. And recheck. So it's starting to get really close. As I mentioned, you know, already here we've got Another quarter of a turn on those two. We're probably plus or minus just well under half a millimeter within true now. So I would be absolutely happy with that in terms of the radial trueness of that wheel. A key thing with truing any wheel actually is to not chase perfection. I think that's a big, uh, a big mistake people often make trying to create the absolutely most perfectly true wheel quite often ends up in a weaker wheel because you'll fiddle around so much with all the different spokes trying to make it absolutely perfect when really a strong wheel is an evenly tensioned wheel so you don't want to uh, yeah be messing around more than you need to now a brand new wheel probably is plus or minus less than half a mil probably more like 0.2 of a mil in terms of its trueness to be honest by eye if you put a wheel in a bike, you'd struggle to see much less than, well, a millimeter out would still be almost perfectly true by eye. So um, yeah, again, don't chase perfection. We're down to a point now where we're well under half a mil in terms of movement. I'd be absolutely happy with that in terms of the radial uh, trueness of that wheel, um, especially as this is a, a second-hand wheel as well. Which, so you'd never get a second-hand wheel as good as you would with brand new components. Okay, so moving swiftly on, let's have a look at the lateral position then. So I'll open the jaws of the truing stand so they line up with the rim, and then let's start to assess where we're at with that. So straight away, just like we did with the radial, I can identify where on the wheel we're out of true. And it's no coincidence then that it's obviously in the same area, that's obviously where the impact has taken place on this particular wheel. So between my two jaws here, I can see that the wheel is touching this side. So the wheel has moved over in this direction. So I know that I want to pull the wheel this way. So I'm gonna just close those jaws slightly so that I can get a more accurate reading. So we're talking about an area, really, these two spokes here, the main uh, section. And the, the hardest point is this point here. Now that's quite convenient because that spoke is the spoke that I want to add tension to. Remember I said this spoke is going to the right hand side of the hub flange, so if I tighten this spoke it will pull the wheel this way, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to pop my bladed holder onto the spoke and I'm going to put a half a turn on that spoke. And then I'm going to reassess. So we've improved it a little bit, we've still got some work to do. Little and often remember, you're not, not going to create a perfectly true wheel with the first turn of your spoke key, it's going to take you a few goes. So another half a turn on that spoke, and recheck. Okay, so as you can see, gradual process. I'm just identifying the spokes that need a little bit of attention. 
and going back and rechecking. So already we've made a significant improvement and I've only turned um, half a turn on one spoke and probably one turn on another spoke. So you can see how those small uh, ad adjustments make a huge difference to the overall straightness of the wheel. The other thing you'll notice is I'm quite often um, inclined to put tension on a spoke rather than to loosen. So that's not always the case. Um, certainly if you went to the spoke that you wanted to tighten and it was really tight already, I would be inclined to look at another way of doing it, which would be if you loosen the opposing spoke, it will have the same effect as tightening this spoke. So that's one way you can get a wheel to move in this direction uh, if you find that this spoke is already really tight. Or another thing that can happen actually is if a spoke nipple is seized to the spoke. Um, that gets into a slightly tricky territory and again that, at that point I'd probably be inclined to say take that to your local bike shop or a wheel builder to let them take a look at it because yeah there's uh, if you're not able to actually physically turn the nipples then you, you're going to get yourself into a bit of a mess or likely, likely to anyway so yeah bear that in mind. So each time I, I go to recheck, I'm actually, you probably notice, I'm actually just bringing the jaws in just that bit closer each time. So now we're probably within a couple of millimeters already. So this wheel is starting to straighten up nicely. Just got that little bit there where I think. So again, this is a good, a good point of note. So there's a, the high spot is kind of here now. But rather than loosen this spoke, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the two spokes either side of it and just put a little bit more, so another half a turn on these two spokes here, just to pull that wheel across in this sort of midpoint here. And recheck. Okay. Now we're getting really close. Now the, the jaws of my truing stand are probably well within a millimeter of tolerance. So if I were to put this wheel in most bikes and spin it, it would actually look really straight. What you can uh, sometimes get over obsessed by is, uh, yeah, what you can see here really does highlight any slight little, uh, tiny little bit out of true. So yeah, again, not focusing on perfection, but I'm still not happy with this one. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Still got that little area just there. So this one, I can just see it touching here. So I just want to pull the wheel this way. And now we are really down into sort of the fine adjustment. So I'm just going to go quarter of a turn more on that one. Okay. So yeah, now we're really getting close. Again, bearing in mind, this is not a brand new wheel either. So that's another reason not to go after every last little 0.1 of a millimeter of trueness because you don't even know at this point if the rim has worn evenly. So in actual fact, I would say um, if I was working on a customer's wheel at this point, I would be pretty happy with the straightness of that, that, that wheel overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could fiddle with that a lot longer and uh, that would uh, in increase the time in this video no end, but uh, hopefully, that shows you just how simple and straightforward the technique for truing a wheel is. Um, you know, we can just take your time, those little adjustments, um, just assessing which spoke needs to be tightened or, or loosened in some cases in which direction in order to get the rim to move where you want it to. Okay, just a final few points to note before we wrap up this video. And that is um, a really good tip someone once told me about wheel building, and I've always remembered, is if you do something and it has just made the, the wheel worse, then don't be afraid to just undo what you've just done. So yeah, if you just turn a, a nipple half a turn or whatever and it's made the problem worse, then just go back and undo that. No harm in that whatsoever. Um, rather than just sort of plowing on and trying to fight that and, and creating more buckles elsewhere. Uh, the other thing you might want to check is the wheel's dish. Um, that's something I haven't really covered in depth in this video because I feel I'd, I'd rather do that as a separate video and I will do it in the future. Um, but yeah, just to very quickly touch on that, what a wheel's dish is, is essentially its uh, central point between the, the hub shell. So using a dishing tool like this one here, this is actually one that a friend of mine made as a, as a part of his A-level engineering project. 
So what that does is give me a measurement off the side of the rim onto the center of the hub shell and I can just tighten that in place and flip the wheel over, put the tool back on and find that that is exactly the same both ways. So I know that this wheel is perfectly dished uh, and is in the center of the hub shell. Uh, it's more of a, a crucial point to be honest on rear wheels where you have actually got a visible dish because of the, uh, the cassette sprocket on the back. Um, but yeah, as I said, we'll probably cover dishing in a separate video. Okay, last but not least then, if you have found that you have adjusted a good number of spokes uh, in your uh, getting the wheel back to true, I mean, hopefully you haven't because you've just been dealing with a minor buckle, so you've just had you know, two, three, four spokes to adjust. But anyway, if you have adjusted a number, a really good idea at this stage is to just re-stress the wheel. Um, now, to do that, the easiest way is to go down onto the floor. So hold on opposing sides of the rim and just put a little bit of pressure down and just lightly flex that wheel. Now, what you might hear is some clunks and clicks and pings, and that is basically the spokes just sort of resettling themselves into the rim, uh, or potentially even some movement on the hub flange. I'm not hearing any pinging from this particular one, so I'm not expecting this one to have gone out a great deal, but what I would do um, with any sort of truing, it's a good practice to get into the habit of doing that. Pop it back in the truing stand, and then I'd spin it again, and just recheck that nothing had settled down and has caused any movement that would that would now, uh, now warrant me going back and just rechecking that with the spoke key. It hasn't in this case, as I suspected, that wheel is still plenty true enough for us to call that a job done. Okay, as promised, I was gonna show you a little hack for how you can potentially um, true your wheel quite accurately without having a wheel truing jig. Um, all I've done here is I've set up a couple of zip ties, one around the chain stay and then one around a pencil. Um, pencil's a great thing to use for this. Don't be tempted to use a screwdriver or something or a, a metal allen key, especially if you've got carbon wheels because that'll just scratch the surface of the rim. Um, but it just gives you a way of having a movable guide that you can set up against the rim and then easily use that as your truing guide. It's also a really good hack for when you're out on the trails. You know, if you needed to make a repair at the roadside or out on the trail, you know, this is if you carry some zip ties with you, you could use a stick or anything. And it's a really good way actually of uh, being able to accurately true a wheel without using a truing stand. All right, so that is the basics of wheel truing. As I said right at the start, it's not a dark art as people often think it is. Hopefully following the steps in this video, you'll be confident enough to have a go at tacking those minor buckles yourself. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please do give us a like and remember to subscribe to the channel. It's totally free and that's gonna help us to continue to carry on making content for you in this way. And if it's more cycling content you're after, head over to cyclist.co.uk for all the latest news, tech, and in-depth product and bike reviews. Thanks for watching.